We are going to cover arithmetic expressions in this video. I will go through a few slides and then show you examples using the whiteboard. You can write expressions that involve multiplication, division, subtraction, etc. The symbols for adding is the sim adding sub subtraction and multiplication are plus minus and star just like uh, what you use in normal math there but for division there are two ways of dividing one is to use um, what is called the integer division which uses slash slash the other one is called real division which uses slash what is the difference between these we will see then there is the modulo operator and exponentiation operator um, exponentiation operator is two stars with no space in between. Don't write the caret for exponentiation. Some people are used to writing this in their math, but this is not valid in Python. Remember that. Percent is going to be somewhat new to many of you. So we will see that in some examples, but let's see what it is for the moment. There is a more complicated definition of what person does, but we are not going to worry about that. We will simply take this view. Let's just focus on positive integers. At some point in time, you can worry about other cases, but let's assume that we are only going to use positive numbers when we use percent. Seven percent four, what does it mean? Four goes into seven once, right? If it were eight, I, it would have gone in twice, but now it goes in only once. So the division of seven by four is going to yield a quotient of one. But that one accounts for four of the seven. What is remaining is three. So the remainder is three, and that is what 7% four brings you. As a second case, 0% five, five goes into zero, zero times. So there is no remainder anyway. So it is going to give you zero, the percent operator. The last one, three goes into two, zero times. So all that two is a, rem is a remainder. So here remainder is not a fraction, but what is remaining after the quotient takes away a bulk of the original quantity. There is an order of evaluation, which we will see in our examples in a minute. If you use the order of evaluation that is familiar to you in math, it is going to be okay, but you want to make sure that you remember this order of Python. I know this pretty well. If you want to change the order, you use parentheses. So anything in parentheses is evaluated first. After that exponentiation gets done, then any negations are done. Then multiplication, I put dot here actually should be star. Division, the two types of divisions which we haven't covered and the modulo are done. We will, don't worry, we will go over all these in a minute. Then after that, you do the addition and subtraction. And typically you do it from left to right, except for exponentiation, which is done from right to left. So let's see some examples to make these ideas concrete. Let's take some simple arithmetic expressions first. Uh, let's say uh, we want to uh, go on with lab two, add some new stuff to it. Uh, let's assume that uh, number of credits taken by a student is say four. Tuition rate 
is 100. I want to keep things simple. Okay? For every course the student takes, there is a course fee. Let's say that is 10. And for every course, there is also a lab fee, which let's say is $5. Let's not worry what these things are for. That is not important. Then tuition would be It's flat for uh, the course. For every course you take, you have to pay $10 as course fee and $5 for lab fee. And the tuition rate should be multiplied by the number of credits to get the total uh, for tuition uh, for the tuition part of it. But uh, this is the total tuition would be, maybe I'll call it T tuition. So the total tuition would be four times 100 plus 10 plus five. But these numbers could change. I could read in all these values. So these are all uh, up in the air. These values could be all different. I just gave examples here. So don't bank on these numbers. It is not always going to be four times 100 plus 10 plus five. This four could be 12, this 100 could be 200, this 10 could be 15, this five could be seven. It could change from execution to execution. So our Formula would be course fee plus lab fee plus number of credits times tuition rate. So this would be the formula. So I write that formula on the right hand side. This is a valid Python statement. The right hand side has a formula for the computation of the total tuition. Whatever numbers are here will be used to do the computation. Whatever it gets would be stored in total tuition. So this is addition, addition, multiplication. Multiplication is done before addition. So even though I put the addition first here, the first thing it does is this multiplication. Then these two are will be added. Then the result of this and the result of this multiplication are added. So this plus is done last. So this is the first thing it does. This is the second thing. This would be the last thing. Okay, so that is the order of operations. You can change the order of operations, which is not a good idea here, by putting parentheses. Then whatever is in parentheses gets done first. So that is uh, one example. Let's now talk about the two types of divisions. What are they? Suppose I have a number A. Let's not worry what that is for and B equals four. If you write A slash B and store it in C, this would divide A by B. So seven divided by four, let me tell you, it is going to be 1.75. So C would be 1.75. On the other hand, if I write D equals A slash slash B, this will also do the division, but it will take the seven, divide by four, and completely forget about the 0.75. So the answer here would be one. It only worries about the integer part of the division. So D would be one. But there is a little catch. What is that? Let's see the next. Suppose A equals 7.0, B equals four, and we write D equals A slash slash B. 
since a is 7.0 this will actually bring back 1.0 as opposed to 1 so this will be a float so that is the that is uh, something to be noted finally not finally we have to do two more things one is uh, star star the other one is percent let's do star star first suppose i write a equals 2 b equals 3 c equals 4 and d equals c star star a star star b what does this do well it will first do this exponentiation exponentiation will be done from right to left so it will do a star star b which is going to give you two star star three which is going to be eight and then this is of course four so it will do four star star eight so four will be multiplied by itself eight times so what is that it is going to be pretty hard to compute i think it is 65536 but i am not entirely sure um, okay um, so whatever that is four times four times four uh, times four times four that is five six uh, six seven eight okay. what that number this is 16 this is 16 this is 16 these two would be give you 16 so this is actually 256 times 256 I think it is 65,536. Okay, uh, so that is how exponentiation works. It is done from right to left. Finally, let's talk about percent. As we saw in the slide, it gives you the remainder after division, roughly speaking. If you are assuming, all positive numbers so this was actually one of the one of the questions in the review set i think suppose i have uh, a certain number of employees if you want a specific number let's assume that there we have 50 employees in a um, in an organization and we have a number of projects Suppose there are four projects and we want to distribute all the employees in equally into the projects. So every project should get the same number of employees. Then how many employees are left without projects? Is it no projects? Would be equal to Let's do this um, without Python. If you have four projects and 50 employees, you can put 12 in each one of them. That will give you 48 of them put in projects. You have two left, right? You can compute this in Python by writing number of employees, percent number of projects. So this percent symbol will give you the remainder after division. So that will be two. So for calculations like this, you would use percent. And uh, this is actually quite frequently used.